Last summer, a nine year old girl from Cumberland was killed when the car she was riding in was rear ended by a pickup truck and pushed into oncoming traffic. The man behind the wheel of that truck was a corrections officer who reportedly told police he fell asleep at the wheel because he had just worked a double shift at the Cumberland County Jail and it turned out it wasn't the only voluntary double that he had worked that week. And since then we have learned that many other corrections officers at the jail are doing the same thing, either by choice or not. News Center Maine Shannon Moss has been digging into what sheriffs admit is a serious problem here. Yeah, absolutely. Cindy and Lee, it's simply a matter of numbers. There are not enough people to fill all of the shifts. Sheriff departments, they're trying to hire more, but the problem is getting worse. Jails say they don't have many options, but to overwork the staff, they already have. And that can have dire consequences. <laughs> It's not for the faint of heart to work here. The Cumberland County Jail is not a happy place. It's not meant to be. We have to deal with every facet of human life coming through the doors. Inside, you're surrounded by steel, locked doors, no windows. A lot of mentally ill people come in here, uh, intoxicated, drugs, high. Lieutenant Scott Jordan has seen a lot in his 22 years working at the jail. He says he and his fellow officers are exposed to violence on a daily basis, particularly at intake, where someone who's been arrested is brought in and booked. So it's our fingerprint machine, and here's where we take all our mug shots. You gotta be very vigilant down here and in your dealing with people because something could change at a drop of a hat. The job has its risks, and it's inherently stressful but recently even more so due to a shortage of help. A correctional officer has to wear so many hats and now on top of wearing so many hats, we're doing it exhausted. So you definitely feel the pressure being this short. How short? The Cumberland County Jail has 34 vacancies. Add to that the 27 officers who are currently out on family medical leave. The York County Jail, which is supposed to have a staff of 74, currently has 32 vacancies and 10 officers on FML. So how are shifts being filled? Sheriff William King tells me that officers may be forced to work up to 16 hours of overtime a week, but that there usually are enough volunteers to fill those gaps. As for the much larger Cumberland County Jail, it often requires officers to stay past the end of their shift, sometimes only five minutes, other times another eight hours. When you're here and you want to tap out and go home and you can't, that's just, it makes it that much harder. You're away from your loved one. If you can't meet the minimum staffing, yes, we have to force people over if nobody wants to work overtime. Cumberland County Sheriff Kevin Joy says he has no other choice. We can't close the doors, so really it becomes how do you mitigate the effect of being down on staff? And that's a challenge. In 2019, command staff at the Cumberland County Jail had to force officers to work past their shift 614 times. Bill Doyle, the regional director of the National Correctional Employees Union, says all that overtime is putting a strain on the officers' personal lives. There's staffing there now that are saying, well, do I take the forced overtime? Uh, or do I say, no, I'm not going to take the forced overtime, get in trouble from work uh, versus not getting in trouble at home? It's really rough. This is, I mean, not to sugarcoat it, this is the most low morale point I've ever seen in the 12 years I've been here. Davis Gabitsky, who has been a correctional officer at the jail for 16 years, says yes, the shortage is stressful, but it's also making the jail less safe. It's a dangerous environment already. You have people who are exhausted, who are burnt out. It's a dangerous situation. Sheriff Joyce agrees. I think it becomes less safe when you're forcing people to work over and when people are working over because there's available shifts. Jail and union management both agree tired, overworked officers are more apt to let their guard down, which can compromise safety both inside the walls of the jail and outside. A Cumberland family knows that all too well. Last summer, nine-year-old Raylynn Bell was killed after the SUV she was riding in was hit from behind by a pickup truck and pushed into oncoming traffic in Gorham. The driver of the truck, Kenneth Morang, reportedly told police he had fallen asleep at the wheel. Morang, who was a corrections officer at the Cumberland County Jail, had just finished working a double shift. Overtime, Joy says, he volunteered for. Sheriff Joy says apart from his regular 40 hours, Morang worked 48 hours of voluntary overtime. 
Those 88 hours were not unusual. Sheriff Joyce confirms that in 2018, Morang worked 2,654 hours of OT, which added an additional $82,750 to his base pay of $43,659. No nine-year-old girl, nobody should ever have to worry about one of our staff you know, running into them because they're tired. The York County Jail has rules in place for how many overtime hours their correction officers can work. Cumberland County does not. Since Ray Lynn's death, jail officials are monitoring how much overtime officers are working. They're also in negotiations with the union to develop an overtime policy. At the same time, they're trying to figure out how to make the job more appealing. There's no easy fix. It's not something you can throw money at. It's not something that you can throw quality of life at. It's something that being a correctional officer has to really appeal to somebody. Union head Bill Doyle says that needs to change. We have to stop pushing correctional officers aside, bring them into the fold and make it a profession. As for Sheriff Joyce, he admits corrections as a whole has done a poor job of recognizing its officers. We haven't celebrated the fact that they are an integral part of the criminal justice system and the fact that you can make a career and you can make an impact without going out on the street. Like Officer Stephen Piles does, he teaches high school equivalency to inmates. It's a high school diploma, but for them, this is amazing. And that's really rewarding. I've had people stop me on the streets and say, hey, do you remember me from 10 years ago? And I do, and they're doing great now, and that pays off, that helps. The officers I spoke with say those moments are rare, but they do happen. They're bright spots in a job that can have a lot of dark days. Sheriff Kevin Joy says he's trying to get creative when it comes to managing this problem, everything from shifting schedules to making benefits packages more attractive. He's also working on bringing in an expert to talk to officers about the dangers of lack of sleep. Meanwhile, a little help is on the way. Four new recruits will graduate from the police academy at the end of the month, and 33 applicants are being screened. York County has two recruits scheduled to go to the academy in March and is screening three applicants. So that'll help a little bit. Shannon, mm -hmm. I know one of the officers in the piece there said you can't just throw money at this problem, but wouldn't money help yeah. solve this problem? It certainly would help. And there is a bill right now in front of the legislature that would address that and also would stabilize funding. Back in 2008, as a way to cap property taxes, a law was passed that required counties to be responsible for 80% of jail costs with the state kicking in the rest. Right. But sheriffs will tell you, union executives will tell you that the state didn't always pay their fair share, causing this funding problem. Mm. Like Sheriff Joyce told me, he says, it's really hard to plan a budget with money you may or, or may, may not, not get. get. Right. So a lot of people hoping that this bill passes. So interesting. Some of the numbers just staggering. Sorry, and and the, you know, the, real, the, the shortage of people, staggering. And think about, that's not, the, the, the amount of voluntary overtime, obviously, that workers, you know, that they're working, that number, that 600 plus number of forced overtime, think of what that would be like if the officers didn't work voluntary right. overtime. Right. It'd right. be staggering. Wow. It's crazy. Wow. Crazy. All right, very, Shannon, very interesting. Thank you so much. Thank you.